Canadian or American? Who makes a better RV? Today we're going to be reviewing two ultralight RVs, one Canadian built and one American built. For the American RV, we're going to be looking at a Jayco travel trailer. This is the Jayfeather Micro 171BH 2021 model. This RV is 20 feet and 2 inches long, and it's a couple years old, but if you were to go and buy it new, cost is $27,800. So for the Canadian RV, we're going to look at a 2019 model Taylor Coachworks 17 Nicknat. If you're wondering what Taylor Coachworks is, because you've never heard of them. This is a very small independent manufacturer in Ontario. So the Nicknat is 17 feet and 6 inches long. And while this model is a couple years old, if you were to go buy one new, the cost is $30,100. If you're new to my channel, you may not know that I have both a free shopping course and a paid version that includes my master database of all the RVs I've graded and the grading app that I'm going to be using today to grade these RVs. So after you put in the information about the year, make, and model, the first question in the app is, what type of water heater is in the RV. So on the Taylor Nicknat, we see the older style Dometic water heater. Now, the newer style Dometic water heaters I don't like. There's some design problems with them, but these older ones I give a high score, 10 out of 10. On the Jayco, we have a similar six gallon tank type water heater, but this is a suburban brand, which is also 10 out of 10 as far as quality. If you want more information on the pros and cons of tank type versus tankless water heaters and how to identify them, go take my shopping course. So let's talk about roofing next. The Taylor Coach actually has an aluminum one-piece metal roof and they use some industrial grade silicone sealants on it so you don't need to touch up the caulking on it every year the way you do with rubber roofs. Very almost damage proof like you're not going to poke a little hole in it with a tree branch when you're backing into a camping spot. On the other hand the Jayco has a TPO or thermoplastic roof and while these have good longevity to them they are more susceptible to tree branches than getting little holes and the caulking you have to touch up frequently. Like literally a Jayco warranty will not cover leaks in your roof if you don't touch up the caulking every six months. That means that during their two-year warranty on their RV, you actually have to have the roof serviced four times in order to maintain coverage on the warranty. I'm going to give both of these roofs a 10 out of 10 on quality, but as an RVer and as a technician, I would definitely want the aluminum roof. So the next category I grade on is slide outs, and both of these RVs have the only kind of slide out that will never break, which is no slide out. Some people in my comments say that you should never buy an RV with slide outs because they're always break. I don't think that's true. There are some slide outs that are definitely quality and some that you should really avoid. So go take my shopping class. So the next question in my app is going to be about refrigerators. On the Taylor Coach, we found a Dometic brand gas absorption refrigerator, which I give a 10 out of 10 score. Folks, some people believe that gas absorption refrigerators are not quality. I disagree with that strongly. Usually the issues I see come from people misusing their gas absorption refrigerators, which causes them to break or causes a fire hazard. That is not the fault of the refrigerator that is the fault of user error. This is why I created my tool free RV maintenance course is to help RV users understand how to avoid breaking their RV. And if you're confused already about what courses I offer, I understand. I, I do have three courses. I have the free mini course for RV shoppers. I have the paid version, which includes the grading app and the database. And then I have the tool free RV maintenance course for RV owners. Details are in the description below. Back to our regularly scheduled programming. The Jayco on the other hand has a 12 volt Furion brand refrigerator, which sometimes you'll see the same fridge with the name Girard on it. They don't make the refrigerators, they label them and sell them under their brand. Folks, I really am not a huge fan of 12 volt refrigerators. They unfortunately tend to break a lot, and this is one of those that I only give a 6 out of 10 rating. Another thing to keep in mind about 12 volt refrigerators on RVs is it's very easy to use them to kill the battery and damage the battery such that it doesn't perform well anymore. Another reason to go take my tool for RV maintenance course, shameless plug. Next, let's talk about the air conditioners on these RVs. For the Taylor Nicknet, I found a Dometic. I give them a 10 out of 10 rating. On the Jayco, I found a Furion air conditioner. And these are relatively new to the market, so I give them a 10 out of 10. I know some of you are wondering why I would give a perfect score to technology that is new or untested. Honestly, folks, like I want to give the benefit of the doubt. I want to assume that they have built a quality unit until it's proven that it's actually junk. Let me know in the comments if you have had any problems with Furion air conditioners. Next, we're going to talk about the cabinet. So the Taylor Nicknat has a mix of plywood and wood construction for the cabinets. Interesting.
interestingly, the doors are very lightweight because they made a frame and covered it in panels, and then they put a plastic edging around it. I still give this a 10 out of 10 because it's all water impervious. It's not particle board or MDF or anything that's gonna fall apart with moisture on it. The Jayco, on the other hand, has cabinet bases that are built out of lumber core. Lumber core is kind of like plywood, except that the lumber core they're using in RVs, it has a thick lumber core, and then it actually has an MDF lining on it. I don't know if you can see the texture here, top and bottom. If enough moisture gets around the edges and swells up that MDF, it can make the vinyl wrap that makes it look like wood start to crack and come apart. So the cabinets, I would give an eight out of 10 in the Jayco. Not a perfect score, not the worst. So the next question in my app is gonna be about countertops. The Taylor Nicknat has really great countertops. It's solid plywood construction with laminate on top and a rubber edge around. Now this can look very similar to a countertop that's made out of particle board with laminate and a rubber edge. And the way I tell the difference is by looking up at the bottom edge of the countertop where you can see wood grain instead of particle board. 10 out of 10, very high quality, very water impervious. These are gonna be durable countertop. On the Jayco on the other hand, in the kitchen they have had a thermofoil countertop, which I give one point. It is just MDF with a very thin vinyl film on it. You cut it, you accidentally melt a hole through it with a pan, or if water gets around the edge of the sink, it will start to swell up the countertop. This is not a very long lasting material. And in the bathroom, they did even worse. It looks like what's in the Taylor Nicknat, but if you look under the edge, you'll see particle board and not wood. I don't know how you use your bathroom, but I use water in mine and water makes particle board fall apart very quickly. It's very low quality, I give this a zero. Next, let's talk about the plumbing systems on these two RVs. For the Taylor Knickknack, I was incredibly impressed to see that not only are they using brass PEX fittings in their water lines, but they're also using copper compression sleeves, which is technically a step above a pinch clamp like we see in most RVs. Their plumbing definitely gets a 10 out of 10. If you're new to this channel, you may not have seen my ranting video where I talk about incorrect plumbing that violates code that is supposed to be governing how RVs are built. Terribly expensive RVs are being plumbed incorrectly. On the Jayco, most everything that I saw was PEX with pinch clamps on it, except behind the toilet. They have a flexible line coming up through the floor, out of the wall, and snaking up to the toilet where they pinch clamped it onto a PEX fitting. That is incorrect plumbing and going to create leaks. And in this case, there's a potential leak not only at the toilet where it's easy to fix, but down below the floor in the underbelly of the RV where it's going to be very difficult to take everything apart to fix that. If you want it plumbed correctly, you're gonna to have to plumb it correctly on your own dime, which is gonna be very expensive labor-wise because of having to take down the underbelly. Warranty is not going to pay to have this fixed unless it happens to leak within warranty, and then they're gonna do it the same way they did it from the factory. They're going to put new bad plumbing in. <laughs> That's their fix if it leaks under warranty. So for plumbing on this Jayco, I have to give this a zero out of 10. Let's talk about the cargo capacity and the suspension and frames on these RVs. I'm gonna give both of these RVs a 10 out of 10 on the frames. I don't expect any serious issues from them. I will note, however, that Taylor Coach builds their own frames. They're not using a Lippert or BAL frame. Interestingly, you'll notice the Jayco has a single axle on a 20-foot RV, whereas the Taylor Coach has two axles on a 17-foot RV. For the Taylor Coach, its total cargo capacity is 1,069 pounds. Now, after you take out the water weight, that equals 745 pounds of cargo weight, including water. On the Jayco, has a total of 947 pounds of cargo, and after you add water, you end up with 442 pounds of cargo weight. So even though the Jayco is bigger, it's roughly half the cargo capacity of the Taylor coach. Fit and finish on both of these RVs was good, 10 out of 10 for both of them. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, Taylor Coach gives a four year bumper to bumper warranty on their camper. I know Jayco really, really likes to play up their like one, two, three year warranty thing, but folks, you gotta read between the lines. These are big corporations that have bean counters that are really good at making money off of you. And that doesn't always involve having an RV that is plumbed properly. Taylor can offer that warranty because these things are really well built. I like that Taylor Coach is a small business. They will build you the RV that you want. Heck, this Taylor Nicknat I reviewed, I don't know if you noticed, it doesn't have a shower in it because the customer didn't want a shower, so they built that floor plan. And again, as always, this video is not sponsored by Taylor Coach or Jayco. It's sponsored by Chris. Chris purchased my tool-free RV maintenance course. So if you found any of the information in this video today to be helpful, be sure to thank Chris in the comments. So the total score for the Taylor Nicknat is 100. Perfect score, A+. Taylor Coach is not going to have this 
same bells and whistles you might find at other RV manufacturers. It's not going to have the heated leather seats and the big TV that pops out of the entertainment center from behind the fireplace. But folks, this is well built and will stand the test of time. The Jayco, because of their choice of materials and appliances, gets a 75 score. And again, because the plumbing got a zero out of 10, I have to give it a F on my grading system. I don't know why it's controversial for me to say that RV should be plumbed according to code. And I know it's only one connection. On this one, it could be leaking in the underbelly, and that's going to be very difficult to have a technician pull everything down to repair that one fitting. Again, not worth it. There are other campers on the market that are properly plumbed, so just go buy one of those. Or buy it if you want a leaky plumbing. I'm not going to stop you. So it almost pains me to say this as an American, but in this lineup, Canada wins. Leave a comment below with what Canadian versus American lineup you would like to see videos on in the future. So if you want to see when my next review posts instantly, be sure to not only subscribe, but hit the bell icon for that notification.